Hey guys, I am Big and Scary. I'm bringing you another StarCraft 2 replay, this time featuring in the top left corner, Cordon, our yellow Zerg, and in the bottom right we have Lava Totus, our red Zerg. Both players are in Masters, we are on Antigua, and it's a ZBZ. I like this matchup. It's a lot of fun to watch. It's not so much fun to play because it's incredibly tense and it's not a very fun game to... to, uh partake in because there's a lot of sweating involved a lot of knee-jerk reactions a lot of oh, regret that's basically the word I'm looking for is when I play ZVZ I come away just smelling of regret uh, but it's a lot of fun to watch because it's you know one second uh, you have a fantastic massive army bearing down your neck and then the next your bane's hit and uh, you win it's it's really fun to watch because it is just a hundred percent spur of the moment one swing to another very much extremes uh, what we don't see in the extremes is our build orders. We're almost at the 15 supply mark, which is when we see a bit more of the conservative build orders begin to take effect. We do not see a 10 pool. We do not see a 6 pool out of either player, which is absolutely fantastic. Hordaon is, uh, yeah, both players are pretty much neck and neck. Neither player is saving up a lot of money. It looks like Hordaon is going to be throwing down his pool in just a moment. And a gas going down for Lava Totus first. Gas first. It's not an extractor trick. There's no way. Uh, supply wise so it's gonna be a bit more of a econ build specifically in the sense of tech he wants to get that speed out very very quickly he's throwing down his pool immediately thereafter that that comes at a cost though I mean he's pulling three drones off the line fourth drone was used for the extractor it's a lot of minerals that aren't going to be gathered for lava totus and so he's gonna have to make this early tech you know work for him and it will. I mean, Antigua is a huge map. You need speed to get your Zerglings across the base, but I think Lovatotus is going to see that he needs to do some early aggression. He needs to uh, push out and actually hit Hordaon, who's grabbing an earlier expansion. He's already got his hatchery down, and uh, at the 15 supply mark, a very, very traditional build. This is probably the most standard build that Zerg has right now, is that 15 pool, 15 hatch. Sometimes it's hatch first, depending on the size of the map. You can probably make it work in Antigua, but you really can't make it work against another Zerg because that's just suicide. You you, you need those defensive units up. Hurana is also grabbing his own extractor, so in a couple of minutes, whenever Lava Totus decides to throw down his own hatchery, uh, these two builds are going to be pretty much identical. Check that out. Extractor has been pulled completely of all drones, so uh, there's no more gas collection going on for Lava Totus, which means he's not going to be forward-thinking. There's no... Usually you leave one drone on an extractor so that you can get enough gas to eventually tech to layer. And it's a pretty good timing so that you can do some aggression early on and you can also have a couple of extra minerals for some defense if your uh, opponent gets frisky. But Lavatotus isn't doing that. He's going to be relying on these first round of Zerglings to do a little bit of damage and it's weird that he's not backing them up with other Zerglings. You'd expect to see another round of two of Zerglings if he's going to be actually doing a lot of aggression and this tells me he's not. He's just scouting around with these first couple of Zerglings. He's doing it before speed which means maybe uh, he's expecting the speed to take Hordaon a little bit by surprise and also this. He's getting that hatchery down which means he's going to be catching up on the economy tab. I think he's hoping that Hordaon does react poorly to this mass produces a lot of zerglings because i mean if i see a bunch of zerglings and i see super early speed five minute speed for those zerglings uh i i firmly believe that i'm going to be dealing with a baneling bus maybe even a one base all in from from zerg and my overlord has not quite arrived in time for Hodoron to scout this uh this hatchery if it's on its way there at all lava totus though has gotten his hatchery he's got that first queen on its way down second queen's already up and uh, here's that reaction. We've got so many Zerglings coming out from Hordaon right now, as well as the Baneling Nest. There's absolutely no saturation down here, with the exception of one drone at that natural. And Hordaon was hoping for this early ex saturation. And right here is where you can really see it, 27 to 20 for that Harvester count. And look at that saturation for Lava Totus. His economy is going to be absolutely miles ahead, Hordaon. And eventually, Hordaon's going to get wise, and I think he already has gotten wise. His speed's going to be finishing, his Baneling Ness is going to be finishing. He needs to move out and do some damage. And uh, I'm not 100% sure if Hordaon was intending to get to this point anyway. You know, it's it's nice whenever you're doing a Baneling bust like this to have another hatchery up to get a bunch of units out. Uh, or if this is just Hordaon making the best of a bad situation. His speed is finishing, his Baneling Ness is finished. He's morphing in four Banelings, but they're directly underneath an Overlord. So Lavatotus is going to know that this aggression is under route, underway. 
Oh, the queens get isolated, gets completely surrounded, hit a couple of times, but they have to retreat, seeing that the banelings are morphing in on the low ground for Lava Totus again. Hordoron getting frisky, pushing in, but this time at a perfect choke and in range of one of the spine crawlers. One, two, three, and four hits go down for those banelings on those queens. They're very, very weak. One goes down and the second goes down. Hordoron, again, making the best of a bad situation. He was losing so many of those zerglings. He was going to come out a loser on the unit's loss tab regardless. But managing to take down those two queens, that's 300 minerals lost right there. And that doubles the amount of resources the Lava Totus lost. Those queens could have one hit points less with as long as they were curating energy, as long as they were doing larva injects. Uh, that would have been, you know, the, the, it doesn't it doesn't matter how much damage Hordoron did, but the fact that he killed them, the fact that he took out both of the ones that can do larva injects, absolutely huge. Uh, that's a big win for Hordoron. And he's going to have to capitalize on that. 30 for 33. I think he is still feeling a little bit behind. I don't think he is. I, I think he's just being the aggressor right now. I don't think he's actually behind. I think he is feeling a little bit behind. And I think he's going to be making incre increasingly desperate plays. Two banelings from Lava Totus were in, in position to deal with the four from Hordoron, but they've managed to make their way in doing four uh, drone kills. The Zerglings from Hordoron have made their way into the mineral line up at the main for Lava Totus and are going to town all those drones. However, so many Zerglings remain for Lava Totus that they're, they just mop them up. I mean, 23, there's no Zerglings out on the field right now. Uh, Hordoron's going to know that Lava Totus has to do something with all these units, and the most convenient thing to do is to move out and actually hit your opponent. Lava Totus, though, is doing something unexpected. He's not mainlining a bunch of units to go out and actually be the aggressor this time. Uh, he's producing a massive number of drones and harvesters to make up for the fact that seven of those workers did go down. 38 over 44, it's not the biggest of... Uh, differences in the drones as we begin to climb in the matter of minutes that the the importance of a single drone begins to wane and those zerglings are going to be moving out and are hopefully going to score a lot of hits on this mineral line oh but this is going to make it very very difficult that extra oh that evilish chamber was so so close those zerglings could have just walked underneath it and prevented it but this is going to be huge those banelings are going to be able to hold this very very small choke pretty much indefinitely. These Zerglings from Lava Totus desperately trying to take down one of those uh, evolution chambers and it succeeded in making it very, very weak. Only a hundred or so hit points left. But those Banelings are really the, the gatekeepers right here. As long as two of those Banelings remain, I don't think Lava Totus, is, Lava Totus is going to be comfortable enough to actually push out and do some damage. And both players are beginning to settle back, realizing that they're not going to kill the other player in the early game as we transition to the late game, or mid game. Late game for Zerg. It never gets here. <laughs> Spire being built up at the natural for Lava Taurus, and we can already see that the Infestor Pit is down, mass producing that pathogen gland. The Infestors will be out in just a couple of minutes, being able to start while that pathogen gland is still researching. La Roach Warren is out and was readily viewable by all those Zerglings, so I think Lava Taurus, La Lava Tortoise is going to, <laughs> Lava Totus is going to be uh, feeling like he's going to be up against Roaches. For the next couple of minutes, which is why he's getting that spire. If he saw that a uh, infestor pit, he might think twice about getting that spire. He could think about getting his own roaches, maybe even just going for a double extractor rather than those mutilisks, because uh, infestors are not useless against mutilisks. They're very effective if you can get the uh, the perfect surround. And look at that uh, overseer leaving. Did he scout it? He did. He scouted the spire. Fantastic play by Hordoron, knowing what sort of tech your opponent is going on is half the battle. Uh, the other half is to realize that you've got to produce more infestors than you would not have normally. And also maybe get out uh, a couple static defenses. Fantastic. Two spores up at the natural, two spores at the main. Any, uh, there's no creep down at the third just yet, but there is a good number of saturation. I mean, look at all those drones. His economy is definitely going to be in tip-top shape for Hordoron, even though he's only a little bit ahead in the harvester count. He does have that third up and mining uh, once it actually ticks off as, as being completed, and it's almost there. But there's no saturation down at the third for Lava Totus, just now beginning to transition his drones over there. What's being researched there? Plus one armor being researched for the uh, Zerglings. No weapons just yet, but we can see the plus two range is being researched for H Hodoron, which is going to be fantastic, especially if he ever decides to get out uh, Hydras to complement the Roaches. And those Infested Terran are going to be able to do quite a lot of damage to these Mutalisks coming out on the field, especially if they stay bunched up like this. One lucky fungal growth can absolutely seal the fate. Oh, but look at that. Good control there. Splitting up so many of these Mutalisks. Three of them going off in one quarter, two on the other. And target firing down those Banelings. 
a very nice play there. And this is how cost ineffective those fungal growths can be. Just one fungal growth on one single mutalisk, that's not effective at all. And it takes, what, four uh, fungal growths to take down a single mutalisk? Uh, that's a lot of energy that could be better spent. And these mutalisks are really going to be flying in there, going to be soaking up energy from those infestors. And uh, this is what's going to really wreck house for those investors, they're going to be out of energy and those Zerglings are going to be able to steamroll in and do a massive amount of damage. I don't know if you guys saw it, but the uh, Hydralisk Den is now out on the field. Grew Spine is being researched. Those Hydralisks will be able to clean up these Mutalisks eventually, but uh, these Zerglings are going to be cleaning up those investors immediately. This is an absolutely fantastic one-two punch from Lava Codis, keeping his Mutalisks very much cost-effective, just flying them into... Uh, some infested Terran, not the most cost effective. Oh, and they're, they're also moving down towards those Hydralisks. But all the infestors from that initial bunch have gone down or will go down in very short order. And it looks like this third is in a lot of trouble. Check out the root workers count tab. Totally even right now and swinging heavily in the favor of Lava Totus as this battle goes on. Looks like all the Mutalisks have gone down unless they've escaped somewhere else. No, they have not. Nine roaches to 11 roaches, but the 34 Zerglings are absolutely cleaning house over here at this third. And it looks like they're completely being unaccosted by any of these roaches while they're taking down this hatchery. I don't know if that hatchery is going to survive. It looks like it's a it's a race, and Lava Totus has decided to give up on the race, retreating with his Zerglings up through that now open gateway, getting a nice scout out. I think the Infestor Pit was just within range. Also, targeting down that queen. Gonna go down. Damn. Fantastic. Really nice reflex. <laughs> nice reflexes by Hodera getting that uh, that uh, uh, transfuse down on that queen. I saw it coming. And I was like, "Why are you chasing those Zerglings? Why? Why would you do that?" But it was for a uh, transfuse, which was just Hodera thinking at least five minutes ahead to move that very very slow queen into into the, the upper upper ground so it could be within range of that transfuse. Really nice. Really nice. Lavatotus is also just one step behind on uh, tech. He's got his own roach worn up with that glial reconstitution. Plus one ground weapons and the pathogen glands. Pretty close to being finished on that infestor pit. It looks like he's moving away from the mutalisks, realizing that they were a bust. They were moderately successful and they definitely allowed the zerglings to be much more successful. Uh, getting those mutalisks in there, taking out those banelings. Fantastic play. By Lava Taurus, but this is this, um, this is indicative of ZBZ. Is it's so incredibly back and forth? I have absolutely no idea who's actually winning. You can look at the supply and it's close. You can look at the uh, harvester count and it's close. Base count, pretty much the exact same thing. Tech, someone's got a spire out, but the other guy's got a bajillion roaches comparatively. So yeah, I mean infestors comparatively. But who's who's actually winning? I have absolutely no idea. It's really going to come down to who can be most cost effective with the units they have out right now. And I think this is the pitfall for Lava Totus is these uh, Zerglings. He's going to have to make sure that those Zerglings are not in the next engagement that's coming. Hordoron is pushing out to take some ground, and I think Lava Totus should just let him have it. I think he should retreat because he does not have a force that's going to be able to meet uh, Hodoron in the middle of the field. This is exactly what he needs to do. Be very cost effective with his Zerglings. Get a surround on the units when he can and uh, pull back whenever he, he can. Those Zerglings have to be very careful with those Infestors. They're moving up. Could there be a Fungal Growth? Fantastic. I think he needs one more to take them down. He does and they do go down and that is a massive loss for Lava Totus. Yeah, those Zerglings are pretty much totally free. But uh, each each hit like that makes it so Hordoron does not have to worry about a run by from these guys waiting in the wings. He knows they're up there on the north. He knows if he moves down south to harass this third, he's going to have to deal with a run by from Lava Totus. And, and he's basically cashing in his chips right now. He knows that he needs to position himself. And there goes that run by Lava Totus moving in. He's probably going to be poking at the third, seeing if he can finish off that hatchery, which is already severely weakened. Only 300 minerals. It gets surrounded almost immediately. At the same time, Hordoron is positioning his units over at the third, sending up a couple of roaches into the high ground as well as throwing out some infested Terran. The Zerglings have succeeded in taking down the hatchery as well as the queen and are immediately beginning to retreat, hopefully coming back to uh, protect that third, but Hordoron all of a sudden is maxed out. He's got some infested Terran on the low ground protecting that ramp as well as the infestors. And it looks like all the roaches have gone down, uh, all the Zerglings have gone down in favor of the roaches. Here comes the big push from Lava Totus managing to tech up to the Ultralisks. I saw him teching to the Ultralisks, but there's been so much going on that I can't keep up with uh, <laughs> with so much tech decisions. I mean, he's got Spire, they've got Hive out now. <laughs> 
those ultralisks is a very it's a very good decision because the upgrades that Lavatotus has taken so far, the plus one ground weapons and the plus two armor, very much uh, benefit the ultralisks. But will it be enough to push through and break through this barricade? Those roaches, there's not so many that the, this number of ultralisks won't have a problem with that, especially if the fungal growths can go down and they can support them with some infested Terran. What you don't see is a lot of range DPS. Those hydralisks are going to have a hard time kind of cramming themselves between the gap. But here comes the major engagement. Those ultralisks going to town, some of the hydralisks misposition up on the north side. The infestors pushing forward, throwing down a large number of uh, infested Terran, which is not a bad decision at all. It's definitely going to bundle up the uh, the enemy in immovable objects just for the time being, uh, delaying those ultralisks. But it looks like the entire standing force of Hadron has gone down. The 19 drones that we see are actually pushing up to deal with some of the reinforcing zerglings from Hordron. And, uh, no, from Lava Tortoise. Lava Tortoise. Lava Tortoise. <laughs> but the investors from Hordron, has, he succeeded in keeping them alive. He lost all of his roaches, all of his hydralisks in that initial fight. But, I mean, how many ultralisks did we have to deal with initially? There was nine of them on the field, eight. And uh, now only two of them remain, and they're in very, very low health. One of them has gone down immediately. And now with the reinforcing the Hydralisks, even throwing in a couple of speedlings to boot, Hordron's not going to have an issue at all with dealing with this aggression from Lava Tortoise. And uh, Lava he lost two bases. He lost this base here, and as well as this one up here to the harassment of these roaches. And, uh, I mean, that's really bad for him. He's, his economy's taking a massive hit. 66 over 44. This definitely cannot keep. If Hordron manages to keep this fourth up, even if it's in this super exposed area, uh, he's he's going to win this match no problem at all. The Ultralisks once again pushing in. There goes the fantastic fungal growth on all those Zerglings, weakening them to the point where they're pretty much ineffective, but those Hydralisks are not protected by the Roaches. They're going to be absolutely chewed alive by those Ultralisks. Only two Ultralisks remain out on the field, and they're targeting down the infested Terran, which is absolutely fantastic for Hordron. All the sun, Lava Tortoise, he's got a lot of money, but he doesn't have a lot of time. He doesn't have the units out on the field right now. He needs to spin down that money, and he doesn't have a macro hatchback at home. He doesn't have the larva necessary to get out the number of uh, ultralisks that could deal with this multi-prong harassment. Those roaches are going to town on that third, I guess the third hatchery kill that they've gotten in this area as well as the one up on the north. So these roaches have absolutely paid for their keep. This expansion has gone up. I think that seal seals the fate for to uh, Lava Totus. If Lava Totus does have some trick up his sleeve, it completely escapes me. He is getting another hatchery up here in the top left corner, but there's it's only a moment of time, matter of time, until the uh, overlords decide to move south just to check out that that expansion. Yes, he's managed to also secure his third, but he hasn't even started to construct that hatchery, and Hordron is already moving out with his just smorgasbord of death. And uh, I, I really do not see how much longer Lava can afford to stay in this. The Zerglings and Ultralisks are just poking out in the middle of the map just to see what sort of shenanigans Hordron is getting up to, to see if he's going to be dealing with the aggression of his third, or if he's finally found that hidden expansion to the top right. But regardless of where Hordoran decides to attack, a lot of Tortus is he's done for. Uh, he's basically giving his all with these Ultralisks, but the Ultralisks that are not supported by units of any kind, uh, they die very, very quickly to pretty much anything else, anything that can outnumber them. Uh, you need Zerglings to to reinforce those Ultralisks. If you can't have Zerglings, get, get Roaches, because they they last a lot longer. And if you can't get any of them, get some Infestors. Uh, unfortunately, Lava Totus just did not have the time necessary to get up the unit composition that he needed. I think he did a fantastic job at that early aggression, especially that mental game that I, I guess I might have just created it. But... <laughs> Uh, I might have just thought that that's what he was doing, but pushing in with those four Zerglings with that speed, tricking Hordoran into thinking that he was going to be dealing with an all-in bust and mass-producing Zerglings to deal with that, and then immediately retreating and working on his own saturation back at home to get that economic advantage uh, and kind of intimidating Hordoran into making an army that he'd have to push out and actually take advantage of, actually forcing Hordoran to attack him, basically, what is what it was. Uh, it did a fantastic job there. It kind of went to pieces after that Mutalisks fight. The, the Mutalisks pushed in. They did a great job in taking out those Banelings. The Zerglings came in. They did a fantastic job taking out those Infestors. And then he just overcommitted. Uh, he sent too many Zerglings too fast. He really wanted to end the game right there. And I, I don't think that was in his cards. 
at that time. He just didn't have the unit composition necessary to deal with the roaches that were constantly reinforcing him. Uh, Hordaron, I'm, you do a fantastic job with this. You do a really good job of keeping your units controlled, especially whenever they uh, have a mixed unit composition. Those infestors, those those roaches, and those hydras, it's very difficult to keep them all in a line, and also well defended. You realize that those uh, that initial combat down here with those ultralisks first making themselves known, that the, the battle was basically a wash, and you knew to retreat to keep your infestors alive, and the longevity of your infestors uh, can really make you cost effective in the long run, and we, we can see that. You were behind in the resources lost half for the majority of the match, and here we are at the end of it with uh, 6k in your lead. Fantastic. You guys are fantastic. Thank you very much for watching my cast. If you have a replay you want me to cast, you can PM me here or on Reddit. One way or another, I will see you guys later. I am Big and Scary. Bye.